students today our topic is about drift velocity of electrons and vector form of ohm's law before drift velocity we have to know about what is current flow what will we call current flow to flow current we use a conducting wire in the wires there are so many atoms are present the electrons present in last cell of an or last orbital of an atom is called valence electron for conducting wire or conductor the valence electrons are weakly attracted to nucleus so they are considered as free electrons free means they can go anywhere now they will move to positive lattice of the conductor then when you take a conducting wire from left side to right side the electron will flow and the right side to left side the electron will flow the number of electrons flows from both side are same so the electron density at a moment both side of the wire are same so we will know about the current flow after connecting the battery when we connect the battery the free electrons will flow from lower potential to higher potential to maintain the conservation of energy a opposite that means positively charged something will have to flow from positive to negative terminals that positive something will be called as holes the flow of holes will be called as current flow the concept of holes are just for theoretical concept mainly current will flow when free electrons will flow current flow will be called as the flow of free electrons okay now the flow of free electrons has a defined definite velocity the velocity of free electrons are called drift velocity now we have to relate drift velocity and current flow how we will relate take a conducting oil having cross sectional area a the electrons are moving through it free electrons drift velocity of electrons is vd in time t electron covers the distance vd into t the electrons covers the volume of the wire is cross sectional area into distance that means a vd t if number density of electrons is a that means number of electrons per unit volume is n so total number of electrons is n a v d t now total charge flown through the wire is that is charge of a electron so total charge will be that now current flow is r equal to q by t equal to if we put the value of q here so i is e a n v d that means v d equal to i by n e a okay this is the relation between drift velocity and current flow if we take the conducting wire length is l then and v potential difference is applied across the wire then electric field e equal to v by l now force will be force on the electron will be e into e charge into electric field so acceleration of the electron will be forced by mass of the electron that means e e by m that is acceleration of the electron if we take two points inside the wire 
A point and B point. Let two consecutive collisions that happen there. Collisions between whom? Electrons are flowing like this. Holes are flowing like this in opposite direction. Then electron and holes will collide each other. So collision will happen. Now, if we take two consecutive collisions at point A and point B, then at point A, the initial electro velocity of electron will be considered as zero. Then at point B, the velocity of electron will be considered as drift velocity Vd. Then we can write V equal to U plus AT. V means final velocity Vd. U is zero. A means E, E by M. T means time between two consecutive collisions. That is called relaxation time of free electrons. That is denoted by tau. That means Vd equal to E, E by M tau. Okay? If we take these two equations, then we can write E, E by M tau equal to I by M E A. Then we can write E by M. Now, this electric field can be write V by L tau equal to I by N E A. Then, here I, we can write V equal to I into M L by N e square A tau. So, it is like V equal to I R. So, this is Ohm's law. Higher, higher R equal to resistance equal to M L N e square A tau. We have known in previous classes that R equal to rho into L by A, where rho is the resistivity of the conductor. Then from these two equations we can write rho equal to M by N e square tau. Here in the right hand side of the equation all the terms depends on the conductor that means depends on the substance. So resistivity is the property of the substance we used. Then conductivity sigma equal to reciprocal of resistivity. That means sigma equal to m e square tau by m. In case of semiconductor, when we increase its temperature, the covalent bond breaks, then number of free electrons increases. That means number density of free electrons increases, so their conductivity increases. Okay? Then, if we take, if we increase electric field, then what will happen? If we increase electric field, force on the electron will increase, then acceleration will be increased. So, drift velocity will be increased. Now we can see that drift velocity is directly proportional to electric field. Here Vd equal to mu e. Mu is called mobility of free, free electrons. That means mu equal to Vd by e. If we take uniform electric field then the drift velocity of free electrons will be called as mobility of free electrons. Here, unit of mu will be Vd, meter second inverse, E, volt meter inverse. That means this will be meter inverse, okay? This will be meter square volt inverse second inverse. And the dimension, dimension of mu will be Vd means Lt minus 1, E means M Lt to the power minus 3 I to the power minus 1. That will be M to the power minus 1 T square I. Okay? This will be the dimension of mobility of free electrons. We will discuss about vector forms of Ohm's law. What is Ohm's law? Ohm's law means V equal to I R. Potential difference equal to current into resistance. When 
we write v equal to v by l where l is the length of the conductor then v equal to el that means v equal to el now we will introduce a new term current density j current density means current per unit cross sectional area j is a vector quantity since area is a vector quantity now its unit is ampere meter to the power minus 2 and its dimension is l to the power minus 2 i that means i will be j a i is j a here we can write r equal to rho into l by a so j equal to 1 by rho e that means j equal to sigma e j is vector quantity rho sigma is conductivity so scalar quantity and e is vector quantity j vector equal to sigma e vector this is called vector form of ohm's law that's it thank you